Our scripture today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the, from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied for it, this is what the prophet has written. But you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over where the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So we have finally arrived at the 12th day of Christmas. You know, even though that the stores would have you believe that the Christmas season begins in August, the true, authentic spiritual season of Christmas begins when? This is not a trick question. It begins on Christmas Day. Okay? So, the partridge in the pear tree being Jesus Christ, of course. Okay? Anybody know what the other gifts in the song represent? It's a little fun quiz for the new year. The two turtle doves, the Old and New Testament. The three French hens. Now, today you think it would be the three wise men, right? No, but it's the three virtues, faith, hope, and love. Okay? Four calling birds. Four gospels. Five golden rings. The Nobody's, nobody's raising their hand on these. Okay. The Pentateuch, the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. It's also the story of history of man's fall from grace. Six geese elaine, the six days of creation. The seven, eight, and nine, they always get me confused. Seven is seven swans of swimming, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you were Catholic, it would be the seven sacraments. Okay? The eight maids of milking, the eight beatitudes, the nine ladies dancing are the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. The ten lords of leaping, can we guess? The ten commandments, okay? Eleven pipers piping. The 11 faithful disciples, and I'm sure you're going to get the 12th one, the 12th day of Christmas, the 12 points of the doctrine of the Apostles' Creed. Everybody knows that, right? I, I went back to the Creed and kind of counted them. I had no idea. And if you bought all of those gifts for your true love this year, you would have spent north of $175,000. Okay, so just. But the point to remember about this is that. Even though some of us have already taken down our Christmas trees and put away our lights and decorations, and that's why I put the candle back out here, Epiphany does not, uh, the Christmas season doesn't end until today, until Epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas. So it's right that we, that we crown, see what I did there, that we crown our Christmas celebration with this lesson that appears only in Matthew. See, Matthew's text had really nothing in common with Luke's more popular account. <clears throat> if you put the two stories together, there's kind of a reconciling that has to happen. It's, a, it's kind of confusing. 
exit the shepherds and enter the wise men. Exit the uh, stable and enter the palace. Exit poverty and enter wealth. But one of the few things that Matthew and Luke agree on is the emphasis on traveling, people going from Nazareth to Bethlehem, from the fields to the manger, from Judea to Egypt. And then the longest of journeys, you see that? Yeah. The longest of journeys is from Persia, what we now call Iraq, to Palestine. It's really rather astonishing to me that these travelers are included in the story at all. After all, the wise men, these astrologers, scholars, magicians, whatever we want to think of them as, they've come from a very long distance. They would have traveled, well, Google, Google Maps here puts it at 750 miles through some harsh desert and mountainous terrain in areas that uh, didn't have a road system, obviously. And as people who would have studied the sky, they, even with the level of understanding that they had at that time, they would have known that traveling across the land would not have brought them closer to whatever it was they were seeing in the sky. So whatever it was, it had to be unusual. It wasn't just a star or a supernova or a conjunction of planets. There was some other longing that prompted them to follow this light without knowing where it would take them. Now see, that sounds kind of familiar. We also follow without knowing what the next step is going to take us or where we're going to go. Sometimes we follow in bewilderment. But as, Christian, as Christians, isn't that our faith statement? That we follow Christ without knowing what's ahead. Now every one of us has deep longing for God within us. And we don't always recognize that desire for what it is, but we do hunger for meaning and for hope and for love. Our spirit longs to be close to God. So maybe that's why we come to church. We're not sure really necessarily what brings us. Maybe we have some mixed motives. But at least part of our reason for being here, I think, is the hope that we will experience God's presence. We come in response to a longing that we can't even name. God's love leads us and draws us just as the Magi were drawn and led by the light of the star. But we're held back in our human uncertainty to move toward it. It's less frightening to stay where we are than it is to move toward a light that we're not absolutely certain we saw. And it's rarely as clearly illuminated as it is in this picture here. We know our current situation. But a deeper commitment, a more serious step toward God, that's unknown. In this moment, God will not reveal everything that is ahead. Probably because it would be just too much for us to understand. I also think it's so we will accept and trust that following God is ultimately the best way for us. For every three far-seeing wise people, there are a hundred who won't see beyond the end of their noses. We, we're not people who are so impractical that we would follow stars. But, Magi were that rare breed indeed. Because they came from a different spiritual tradition. They would likely have not had a lot of knowledge about Jewish history and the, the uh, prophecy of the Messiah. They simply took the appearance of this light in the sky to mean something remarkable and noteworthy was happening. And in their understanding, they related the star to a new chapter of history. So when they ask about the new king, Herod fears for his job. And, and this is a, actually, this picture is from the, the square in the, um, the middle of Jerusalem. Um, 
there, this was obviously a reenactment, but it was it's um, it's where they say that Jesus was crucified at the in the place at the top of those stairs up there. It's like, huh? Okay, you know, Jesus was crucified at the feet. There are a couple of places that you know, but the word in, Jer in Israel when you're on tour there, if it's not here, it's near. Okay, so um, all right. Anyway, so Herod is fearing for his job. He asks what we would think of as the reference librarians, the scribes, for help. And the scribes point to Bethlehem. Herod, of course, tries to trick the Magi into coming back to tell the child's location so he can pay the child a visit too. Because after all, anyone worthy of worship is threatening. Jesus' birth disturbed the status quo for everyone. When a new king takes over, Everything we own, everything we claim, and everything we dream is threatened. Well, this baby grew up and changed all the rules. Jesus taught a revolutionary ethic of unconditional love, stubborn forgiveness, and radical hospitality. And he taught that to those who were most marginalized in society. And he got into a lot of trouble for teaching and living out the notion of what God's kingdom looks like. None of us wants to be uncomfortable. Our immediate and human desires obscure our spiritual goals. We know God invites us to a higher purpose. To spend less on ourselves and more on those in need. To dedicate our time away from our own edification and to give our time to others, to our family, to friends, and yes, to strangers. And God tells us sometimes with a, a gentle persuasion and sometimes with a brilliant light in the sky that we should turn our attention from the temporary to the permanent passing time to investing in eternity. We know far more about God's invitations than we will admit. And we sure know when we don't listen to God. But see, I love that the wise men, wise men followed that light even though it probably seemed foolish. They wanted to see this new king more than they wanted to keep their treasures. More than they wanted to play it safe and more than they feared the difficulties of the journey. And it says in the message, after these scholars saw Herod the star appeared again and led them on to Bethlehem, they could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. And they weren't surprised that this new king was a baby. And even more interesting... They were not surprised that this baby, this infant king, was born in a place of poverty. There was no judgment by the Magi of what they found when they followed the light. And there wasn't judgment from Emmanuel either. See, everyone is welcome at the manger. Even these unusual visitors from a very different background who were willing to follow the Creator's light to an unknown destination. Visitors who disregarded the mandate of the human ruler and instead obeyed the voice of a dream to protect a poor child. Are we that bold? On Christmas Eve and then again last week in Jeff's message, we saw how we have been given the light of Christ. That means that we are emboldened with Christ's love and strength. Now, are we courageous enough to seek God in our common questions of ordinary life? Can we go forward in faith? Or do we shrink back in fear and cling to the desire to remain just as we are now? Like we talked about with with Lena, are we anchoring ourselves at the dock when we're meant to sail with the wind? And we're called to follow the light, to carry the light, to share the light. Christian faith is not just a set of beliefs. It's a willingness to travel and pursue God's gentle light. 
It's not a place to stand, but a direction in which to move. God invites us, like the wise men, to follow the star, to follow the light. And you know what? God knows the way. Amen.